Amen. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's turn uh, to Psalms 1. It's our lectionary passage for the day as we are uh, continuing to uh, through a series that I'm entitling Truth and Dare. Uh, it's inviting us to think deeply and more critically about the ways in which uh, we are discerning truth in this season and in this time and how uh, the truth as we understand it, as we learn it, how can we take the opportunity and dare we say live that out with much more intentionality? Psalms chapter number one has been read. Uh, I heard, uh, I think that was Sister Helen I heard reading, amen, all right, with her anointed self, amen, uh, reading um, the, the lectionary passage. I have a couple versions that I'd like to introduce to us as we uh, take on this passage for the morning. I'm going to read first from the voice translation. And verse number one, it simply says, God's blessings follow you and await you at every turn. When you don't follow the advice of those who delight in wicked schemes, when you avoid sin's highway, when judgment and sarcasm beckon you, but you refuse. For you, the eternal's word is your happiness. It is your focus from dusk to dawn. You are like a tree planted by flowing cool streams of water that never run dry. Your fruit ripens in its time. Your leaves never fade or curl in the summer sun. And no matter what you do, you prosper. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, verse number four continues to say, for those who focus on sin, the story is different. They are like the fallen husk of wheat tossed by an open mind, left deserted and alone. And in the end, the wicked will fall in judgment. The guilty will be separated from the innocent and their road suddenly will end in death. Yet the journey of the righteous has been charted by the eternal. All right, that's Psalms 1, uh, according to the voice translation. Let's read from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, the scripture, verse number one says, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and day. Night. Verse number three, they are like tree planted by rivers or streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. And the wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Oh, my God, the word of God for us, the people of God. Let us say thanks be to God. We're going to speak from the topic simply today. Do you want to be happy? Amen. Do you want to be happy? God, we ask you to bless the word of God that has been read for us, the people of God. We ask you to hide this word in our hearts so we will not sin against you. And please send your anointing that makes teaching and preaching easy. May it rest on me and the hearers of your word. And we'll say thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the people of the way say amen. Come on, somebody holler. I want to be happy. Amen. I want to be happy. Amen. Uh, you know, part of uh, the task of the follower of Jesus, particularly living in a context and a world where we are constantly being tugged and pulled in multiple directions, is to find an equilibrium, a place and a space where our commune with God is not easily upset by the disruptions outside of us. I mean, it is indeed the case that for many of us, we can acknowledge that uh, there are certain places and spaces where it's easier for me to be connected to God. My consciousness around God's plan and purpose for my life are much easier to be in tune with when I'm in the sacred place called the sanctuary or when I'm in my prayer group on the uh, Tuesday night virtual 
prayer line or while I'm in the Bible study or the small group, while I'm continuously being reminded of God's will, it is easier for me to understand that I have to maintain an equilibrium. But how many of us can acknowledge that uh, in as much as I would love to constantly be in the sacred places with God's people? Uh, sometimes I find myself on a job and there are no uh, obvious <laughs> presence of God's people. Uh-huh. And this is not saying if there ain't nobody on your job that's, that's saved, praise God. I'm just saying it's not obvious that the presence of God is there. Or even sometimes in your home or in the store or while you're riding in traffic that there are moments where life can easily knock us off of our equilibrium. Well, Psalms 1 is one of these uh, most fascinating passages because I like how one author says that uh, the book of Psalms is experience in search of theology, which means that it is starting squarely where the uh, experience and the journey of God's people begins. It is not starting from above. The idea where, you know, I'm reflecting squarely on what God's plan is, and now I am consciously trying to, to, to trickle God's plan down in my life. The Psalms often starts from below, where the, 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 the material of your life the struggle of your life, the, the hurt and the pain of your life is often calling out to God for some direction. Anybody ever been in that place before? Amen. We've, we've kind of been there the last 18 months in a, in a, in a kind of meta way, right? The whole country has had to reckon with our mortality. We've had to reckon, some would say, for the last four years or five years with our national crisis of leadership. Some of us who, who are conscious of the struggle of, of, of oppressed folk, whether you are a man or a woman, black or white, uh, rich or poor, you've had to be mindful of the historical struggle of hierarchies in the way in which society is structured. And sometimes, you know, we can start from above and, and, and as some say, be so heavenly minded that we are not any earthly good. And in a sense where we can just kind of spend every era or point or struggle in our life using platitudes that we've heard from somebody else. But how many of you know sometimes you need some experiences of your life to find a theological explanation? We need some moments in our lives where we can learn something new about God. Learn a different way in how God is attempting to put your life back together again. And I want you to appreciate you that are listening to us today that uh, the book of Psalms is particularly this chapter is is not attempting to to speak uh, in a binary kind of way, in a fundamentalist kind of way, in a wicked versus righteous way. The, 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 the task of this passage is to help us to appreciate that while you go through life, you will have to be mindful of the acuteness of the presence of evil, of wickedness, of struggle, of trial. It is not that you are to go through your life popping your collar because you don't believe you are wicked. Nor are you to go through your life uh, trying to find out who among you is more righteous. But it is attempting for you and I to be conscious of the fact that when you go out into the world, you may find yourself in circumstances where evil is literally closing in on you. And in those moments, what are you tasked to do? In those moments, what kind of, as we said last week, influences are you allowing to uh, provide you your next steps? Uh, in those moments, how are you training your mind and your heart and your spirit to not become that which you know you must actively resist? 
Whoo, and I'm here to tell you, it's, it's easier said than done. Amen. Amen. How many of you know, amen, you know that you're supposed to, you know, uh, turn the other cheek, as they say. Amen. Then when, uh, when the time comes, amen, you talking about, well, Jesus didn't mean this for me. Amen. Amen. And I know turn the other cheek is, 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 a, is a, supposed to be a, 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 an expression of, of me uh, demonstrating that I have more power than you who are able to harm the body. But how many of you know sometimes your body can talk louder than your spirit? I wish I could talk to somebody in here today. Amen. You ought to tell your body, I need you to talk more quietly. Amen. I'm trying to get this spirit to holler out in the middle of my trial. Amen. Amen. And, and this is why, you know, when we talk about this passage, you know, uh, growing up, we read the King James Version and it always said, blessed is the one. Right. And, and, and when you read the, 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 the earliest manuscripts and the Hebrew, uh, you find that this word blessed and happy are interchangeable throughout the earliest of the text. And it it made me think of my work that I did while I was in seminary with St. Augustine. And, you know, I like to quote Augustine and a lot of the patristic fathers and mothers earlier in the first century because I find that they have some very interesting reflections that are very relevant to us today. Because just like us today, they were followers of Jesus living in an empire-like situation. They were followers of Jesus who were living under the auspices of a nationalistic uh, government that thought that the highest expression and identity was to be Roman or was to be Greek or was to be a part of this particular cultural space. But Augustine would arise through that culture and find himself in such a precarious space that he would begin to write and say things like, my heart will never be at rest until it finds its rest in God. I mean, what does it mean for someone like Augustine and many of us to have reached some of the highest uh, spaces and places of, 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 of achievement and, and, and to have outlasted some of the most difficult seasons of our lives and still be mindful that God, in spite of it all, I am cognizant that unless I squarely find my rest in you, that all the achievements I have on my wall, all of the testimonies and stories that I've had of making it through, they mean very little unless I can stay in an equilibrium of rest and fellowship with God. And I want you to know, child of God, that it is important for you and I to keep reminding ourselves, Lord, how can I find happiness in your will? How can I find an equilibrium in your purpose? What does it mean for me to not find the, 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 the topsy-turvy, the tumult of life? To continuously push me off of my place where you have desired me to find happiness and blessedness in you. And I want you to be a child of God who believes that in spite of what you're going through, you can find blessedness in your circumstance. Yes, yes, yes. I want you to know that there is a happy place. Amen. Uh, you know, we love the, the Pharrell song, Because I'm Happy. And, you know, hey, that song, come on. You, 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 you don't even have to be in a good place. And you hear that song and you start moving. And my favorite, my favorite image of that is looking at John Lewis, amen, with no rhythm at all. Amen. Uh, just snapping his fingers. He's snapping off beat and his body is moving on the upbeat and the downbeat and the side beat. Amen. But you could tell that even though he was not on beat, he was on happy. Somebody say amen. And I want you to know, child of God, you may not always be on beat in your life, but you can be happy. Uh, uh, pat yourself on the chest and say, I can be happy through this. And this is why I find Augustine to be so important uh, when we think of the ways in which we understand the marriage of right belief, which is theology, and right action, which is faithfulness. Too often we, 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 we uh, uncouple those two things. And we think in church that all it requires is right belief. I need to have the right doctrine the right theological stance. I need to have this formula. 
But when it comes to the living it out, the faithfulness, then uh, that is uh, secondary to the right belief. But I want you to know there's been a whole lot of right belief articulated with our mouths. But if anyone in the history of Christian, so-called Christian uh, 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 practice needs to marry the words with our actions, it's the American church. Lord, I wish I could talk to a few folks about, amen, the failure of the American church. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I, I posted this, uh, Chris Hedges, who is uh, one of these highbrow intellectual uh, theological writers. And I posted this and, and on my page, and it kind of, you know, got a lot of likes. But it, it really expressed a heart of mine last night as I was studying. Because I was thinking about how many of us cause our faith to lose its value in the public square. Lose its value in the streets and in the the schools and in our families when uh, our, 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 our beliefs don't match up with our actions. Amen. And I'm, 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 I'm square right on through this now. Uh, he says that what I'm willing to do, which the mainstream church is not, is to denounce the Christian right as Christian heretics. Uh huh. You don't have to, as I did, spend three years at Harvard Divinity to realize that Jesus didn't come to make us rich. And he certainly didn't come to make Pat Robertson and Joel Osteen rich. Sorry for all y'all who love uh, Joel Osteen. Amen. And what they have done is acculturate, listen, the worst aspects of American imperialism, capitalism, chauvinism, violence, and bigotry into the Christian religion. In many respects, I think he is trying to say that there is a obsession at times with the kind of theological uh, 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 fundamentalism of what it means to be blessed and happy. But the way in which we live it out leaves a gap in our faithfulness. And how many of you know that faithfulness to be faithful to the ways of God is more important than you having a theological expertise around what you think right belief looks like? Yes, yes, yes. Because if you can't live it out, how many of you know, then it may not be any good to you. Yes, yes. Give me a little more on this monitor, Mike. Give me a little more on this monitor. I remember uh, uh, just uh, reviewing the life of Jesus. How? Jesus, you know, whenever he walked through the earth and he was always encountered or encountering the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was encountering those individuals who who seemed to have uh, an expertise on what it meant to know the Torah and what it meant to know the law. Jesus seemed to always run up against them. Because they always seem to apply the Torah and the law in a way that kept Jesus from being able to live out the spirit of God's work in the people. Mm -hmm. When Jesus tried to heal somebody on the Sabbath, amen, they would stand up and say, you can't heal this woman on a Sabbath. And Jesus, Jesus, you know, was like, listen, I think I'm the one that made up the Sabbath. It's kind of like Peter last week, amen. Jesus telling Peter he's about to be persecuted and die. And what? Peter comes and tries to rebuke Jesus. Jesus had to tell him, get behind me, Satan. Amen. Some of us, amen, the way we are living out this faith, God is telling some of us that we need to tell Satan to what? Get thee behind. Why? Because your rhetoric and your life do not match. And this is where I find happiness to be elusive from a, a, a systemic w- uh, manner or from a ecclesiolo- ecclesiological manner. That happiness, when made radically individualized, often means misery for someone else. But when you and I can pursue blessedness, the happiness that comes from the well-being of all of creation... Lord, have mercy. How many of you know God gives out happiness in doses that everybody can benefit from it? Uh, You ought to pat yourself on the chest and say, God, help me to dose out some happiness where everybody can, not just the people I like, uh, not just the people who look like me, not just the people I agree with, but God, I want to make everybody happy. 
according to the ways of your scriptures and your plan. So when, when we talk and think of the scriptures, I, I want to give you a few ways that I think uh, happiness can be within your grasp. The first thing that the scripture says is that uh, you are blessed or happy when you don't follow the advice of the wicked. Or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of the scoffers. Uh, one way that you can be happy is to resist the wicked way. Yeah. Somebody holler, I must resist the wicked way. Yes, 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 yes. Now, you know, uh, again, I'm not uh, in the scripture. I don't believe in this context is attempting to divide the people of the earth into a righteous camp uh, and a wicked camp. Uh, because how many of you know it ain't up to any of us who falls in each camp? Uh, I mean, believe me, I wish I could divide some of us up into some of these camps. Amen. Some of y'all who follow me on social media, amen, think I already do. Praise God. <laughs> uh huh. But, but I want you to know the text is not talking about righteous and wicked people. The text is talking about righteous and wicked ways. <laughs> and you and I need to begin to ask ourselves more regularly, which way am I following? Am I following the wicked way or am I following the righteous way? Yeah. And how many of you know that uh, you can be on one way one day and take the wrong turn and be on another way another day? All right. All right. I know it's quiet. Uh, amen. Somebody said, I need to make sure my GPS system is working every day. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't know if you've ever been lost because your GPS system, amen, uh, uh, gave you some directions and you missed a turn. Uh huh. Anybody ever been lost like that? I know I have. Uh, amen. I was riding somewhere. I think I was in Oklahoma this past week, uh, and I didn't know the directions where I was supposed to go. So I'm depending on a GPS. But because I my attention got 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 a little, you know, turned around. I think the GPS told me to go right, and I went left. And a 10-minute drive took me 30 minutes. Uh, how many can say sometimes taking the wrong way delayed my arrival at the destination? Uh, it's not enough to have the right intent uh, if you don't have the right directions. Lord, help me to have the right directions. Uh, you know, the scripture says that you're blessed if you don't follow the advice of the wicked. If you don't take the path that sinners tread. If you don't sit in the seat of the scoffers. Uh, I want you to know that the wicked way often invites some of us to take its uh, 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 alignment in three kinds of ways. Uh, sometimes we're asked to walk in the wicked way. Sometimes we're asked to stand in the wicked way. Sometimes we're asked to sit in the wicked way what am i trying to say when you're walking in the wicked way you're walking in the opposite direction of what happiness brings to god and god's people when you are walking in a wicked way your heart becomes cold towards the things that make all of creation suffer when you're walking in the wicked way you forget that your concern as a follower of jesus is everybody and not just a few people when you're walking in the wicked way your direction is antichrist and that's why some of us better be careful about how much we fellowship with some of these so-called christians who can't discern that they're walking in a wicked way yeah oh i'm here to tell you some of us you know think it's all right to you know play around with some of these Trump Christians, uh, to play around with some of these, you know, uh, Christian nationalists and Christo fascists. Uh, but I've had to tell a few of them, listen, uh, I don't know what Jesus you follow. Uh, so I'm going to have to wait until you, you know, uh, as Peter said, uh, have you received the Holy Ghost? Uh, or was that Paul? I can't remember which one it was. Uh, since you believed. Uh, because if you really had God and God had you, uh, you would not be okay 
okay with immigrants uh, uh, being tortured and terrorized. Uh, you would not be okay with the poor living outside in tents uh, while we and you collect millions of dollars in tax breaks. Uh, you would not be okay putting content on the internet uh, or in the schools that cause our children to question their own humanity and dignity. Uh, I want you to know, child of God, you got to resist walking in the evil and wicked way or some of us stand in the wicked way that's about your positionality some of us are unaware that people are asking you to align to a position in society that actually feeds you and I into the wicked way but you are not stand in places where you get further and further away from happiness in God you ought to be able to say, I am not going to stand on something that is not right. Uh, Voltaire, he says it like this. Those who can make you believe absurdities uh, can make you commit atrocities. Lord have mercy uh huh that's what's happening in some of our spaces uh, we're standing up for things uh, that make no sense uh, and I don't mean no harm amen about everybody who has some of the hesitancies and who are suspicious of fake news versus uh, 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 facts and, and some of us who, who feel like you gotta do your own research about everything uh, ain't it interesting amen that some folk ain't did more research uh, in their whole lives uh, until you know a year ago <laughs> uh-huh you fell out of school because you couldn't research <laughs> hmm Lord, I, I, I'm not trying to be elitist, but what I'm trying to say is why would you build your life on sand, on the absurdity of the sand when literal life is at stake? Oh, I want to stand not in the place of the wicked, but I want to put my feet firmly on the rock that is Jesus, on the truth that is Jesus, on the promise that is the Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah and then he says you are not sit in the seat of the scoffers I joke all the time how growing up amen we got this verse interpreted to us where you couldn't go to the movie show amen amen you couldn't sit in the movie theater why because that was the seat of the scornful you didn't know what was happening in the movie theater so you stay out the picture show uh huh and 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 and, and I think that it was the holiness folk that kept the drive-in movies alive. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We go to the cow palace. Amen. Somebody say amen. And we be sitting up in our car watching E.T. Trying to change the dial on the roof. Trying to hear E.T. phone home. Now, how many know that's not what the scripture is talking about? The scripture is talking about where do you make your home? Are you making yourself at home in wickedness? Is your identity too wrapped up in the wicked ways of the world? Are you too comfortable around the wicked? Around those who seem to be addicted to the bloodthirsty ways of this culture uh, I'm not telling you that we got to be hermits but I am telling you, you ought to have a little bit of discomfort. Uh, you know, I, 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 I used to only be able to hang out for oh so long. Uh, and then it'd be like, this is my exit. Uh, some of the brothers in the neighborhood, when things start to get a little crazy, uh, they used to be like, young Mike, it's time for you to go home, young fella. Uh, they'd be like, no, I want to hang out. No, you go on home. Why? Because they understood I had a father named James McBride. Somebody say amen. Uh, uh -huh, and as my dad used to tell us, you have representation. Uh, how many of you know that you can't sit in the seat of the scornful? Why? Because you have representation. 
You have somebody who is standing up for you. I love it how Jesus is, is described in scripture as standing before the throne of God, making intercession for you. That means that God is hearing a consistent intercessory prayer on your behalf. How many of you know, I'm glad that somebody's praying for me. I'm glad that when the prayer meetings ends at the church, it does not end in the presence of God. I'm glad that when you get tired of praying for me, when you run out of words to say, how many of you can take comfort that Jesus is praying for you? He's praying that your strength don't fail. He's praying that your mind don't fail. He's praying that your heart don't fail. He's praying that you get healed in your body. He's praying that your anointing increases. He's praying for your family to stay together. Jesus is praying for you. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah that Jesus is praying for you. Now, so, so let me give you the questions. The, the first question is, are you walking, standing, or sitting in the space of blessedness or wickedness? And where can you find influences that contribute to a blessed life? Make no mistake about it, child of God. If you want to be happy, you must resist the wicked way. Somebody holler, Lord, help me to resist. Help me to resist. Help me to resist. The second thing that the scripture says is that we must meditate on God's way. Somebody holler meditate say it again meditate I must meditate on God's way verse number two says that your delight is in the law of the Lord and on this law do you meditate day and night now this is uh, you know a point that seems remedial but it, it for me is very uh, 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 what's the word elusive because sometimes uh, meditating on the Lord day and night feels like a very uh um, we we we're doing some therapy, some 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 counseling, and 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 we're we're learning about mindfulness, and and you know in our in our sessions, you know the therapists ask us, listen, can you um um just take five minutes, uh, listen to this song, uh, and just find one thing in the song that you can focus on, and so here I am uh, trying to focus on one thing, uh, and then all of a sudden I remember the bill I have to pay, I remember. I remember the argument I got on with the people on my job. I remember the back ache, my neck and my back and my back and my neck. Uh -huh. I have all of these challenges when I'm being asked to meditate on something mundane. Anybody ever been there where you just feel like, God, I, I'm trying to meditate on you, huh? but the devil keeps running up in my head running up on my job running up in my block running up in my house uh, but the scripture says that if you can learn to meditate on God's word day and night you will find happiness I want you to know child of God you and I have to learn to structure our days where we can have moments of reprieve where we can constantly find ourselves meditating on not just the law of God, meaning the fine print, but the purposes of God, the plans of God, the principles of God. How many of you know when you meditate on the principles of love, it's easier for you to be more loving? When you meditate on the principles of joy, it's easier to tap into that unending source of joy that bubbles right beneath all the despair. When you can learn how to meditate on that which is just, it becomes easier for you to do justice. And we have to structure in our day meditation that allows us to focus on that which really matters. This is where I believe the Muslims have us beat because they structure in their day multiple times of prayer. 
And you know, uh, I find it to be very compelling uh, that sometimes, maybe all the time, uh, I need a structured time in my day uh, to just steal away from the hustle and the bustle. Uh, you call it a bathroom break, call it what you want, uh, but have a little a little a little list of scriptures in your pocket uh, where you can go and get some alone time uh, walk around the block uh, and do what brother Lawrence said uh, where I'm going to practice the presence of God uh, I'm going to see God in the trees uh, I'm going to see God in the birds uh, I'm going to see God in the water uh, I'm going to see God in the mountains uh, I'm going to see God in the grass that grows through the concrete uh, why because if I can find God in the mundane. Uh, how many of you know I sure enough can find God uh, when he shows up with intentionality? Uh, uh, somebody shall meditate. The meditating on God, it helps you and I to become less wicked. Uh, it helps us to become less seduced by the ways of selfishness. Uh, when I'm meditating on God uh, and you cuss me out, uh, guess what? Uh, I won't have a cuss word to get back at you. Uh, I may think about it though, praise God. <laughs> but it won't come out of my mouth. Why? Uh, because thy word have I hid in my heart uh, that I I might not sin against thee. Walter Wink, he said, there can be no social struggle that can be effective if it only changes structural arrangements without altering the personal spirituality, which means that we can fight for justice, and I do. We can change the systems, and we do. But God's biggest project is to change us. Some of us who are in some of these churches uh, where we don't hear a message that makes us more compassionate. Uh, I want you to know, don't be so caught up in the political uh, and don't make false distinctions. Uh, I hear all these folk talking about uh, a both and. Uh, well, you ought not be partisan for the Democrats uh, and you ought to not be partisan for the Republicans. Uh, I'm here to tell you I am an equal. Uh, uh -huh, well, how, what do you call it? I, I distribute it out equally. Uh huh. But there are some moments where the wicked way is much more concrete on a particular side of the aisle. And when the wicked way is costing us lives, I'm not going to speak out because I may be a Democrat or an independent or a Republican. I'm going to speak out because the wickedness of this world needs a voice. Crying out in the wilderness uh, uh, the Bible says cry loud spare not uh, lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion uh, show my people their tray I feel like preaching in here today uh, uh, what practices then of meditation uh, and reflection are a regular part of your life uh, I want you to know you ought to pray every day uh, you ought to meditate throughout the day uh, you ought to have a few spiritual songs uh, while you bumping Nicki Minaj Lord have mercy uh, while you Something Lil Wayne, God help us. Huh? Why you lip uh, imbibing Rick Ross and 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 I don't know what's the other one. What what is Nyla Doja Cat? Somebody I don't know. Uh, why why you listening to all these folk? Huh? How many of you know you better have a have a have a little spiritual song? Uh, I wish I had somebody that knew a spiritual song. Uh, a song that said, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Uh, there my glory ever. Uh, somebody had a, a song that said, God specializes. Uh, we don't sing them songs no more. Uh, but there's something about some of those spiritual songs. Uh, just put it in your little playlist uh, and watch when your spiritual song come on. Uh, after you get done popping and, 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 and doing all your your, your stuff. Uh, watch how the spiritual song will get down in your soul. Uh, I never heard anybody, Lord, let me get off the music because I'm getting on a tangent. Uh, uh, somebody holler meditate. 
reflect. Uh, can you reflect on what God has done? Uh, I mean, what does it mean to reflect? Because I know some of us, we've never even engaged in mindfulness. Uh, we've never even engaged in meditation. Uh, what it means is just to be still and to close your eyes uh, and just start waving your hand. Uh, I know you may look strange to some folk, uh, but I dare you, you just wave your hand about 10 times uh, and you start meditating on what God has done. Uh, I dare you right in your house, start waving your hand. Uh, I dare you while you're driving, start waving your hand uh, and think of what God brought you through. Uh, didn't God bring you out of some stuff? Then God show God's self to be true. Oh, my meditation is just waving my hand. It's just going down the laundry list of what God did for my family, of how God brought me out when I didn't think I was going to make it. Oh, meditating is how I believe that God, if you did it before, you can do it again. Again, Lord, somebody give God the praise. And then the last thing the scripture says is that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Somebody holler, be like the trees. Uh, say it again, be like the trees. I love how the tree is planted by a river of living water. Oh, because sometimes you and I can find ourselves planted by the wrong thing. And even though you may be a strong tree, when the roots don't have a connection to a source, the strongest tree gets it's brittle uh, and it will con be consumed uh, by the external heat. Uh, me and Nyla were looking online yesterday uh, at the fires that are raging in through the sequoias. Uh, these sequoias have been around for thousands of years, uh, but because the fire is so hot and it's moving so fast uh, and there has not been rainfall uh, to nourish the trees uh, the fire is now getting ready to overcome a tree that has been planted for thousands of years. I thought about it last night on my way to sleep and I said, God, please keep me by your rivers. Keep me by your waters. What is the water? The water is that which brings life to you. It's that which nourishes you. What are the roots? The roots are that which keep you firmly planted on the ground. It's that that outlasts Huh, you know, if you look at the roots of a tree, uh, the deeper the roots go, uh, the stronger the tree is. Uh, if you got a tree and the roots are less than 5% of the tree, uh, then that tree is going to fall over. Uh, but if you have a tree uh, that has roots that are as long uh, as the tree itself, uh, it don't matter. What comes and visits the tree? Even when the fire burns out the top of the tree, the roots will never be scorched. Uh, how many of you know you may get burned out, but the roots will always cause you to grow cause you to grow again. I feel God telling somebody depend on your roots through this season. Don't you dare get too consumed with everything above ground. But you need to go beneath the ground. You need to start cultivating the roots that can hold your strength and hold your power. The trunk of the tree is what gives the tree strength. The branches are what you are putting out. So think about this. You got the roots about where you're grand grounded. Huh? You got the water that nourishes you. You got the trunk that gives you strength. You got the branches and the leaves that determine what you are putting out. Huh? The internal work, huh? it creates external production. Huh? You better be like a tree 
planted by the rivers of water. You better be like a tree, meaning let God work on the inside of you. Let God heal you. Let God lead you to a healing place. Don't, don't, don't skip out on your therapist this week. God is trying to help you get some healing. Don't skip out on your worship this week. God is trying to do some internal work. Don't forget to pray and meditate this week. God is trying to solidify you. Why? So when the fire starts burning, when the floods start coming, you can still in the middle of the flood and in the middle of the fire find happiness. Oh God, I want to be happy. I want to be happy when I'm going through it. I want to be happy when I'm going under. I want to be happy when I'm coming out. Why? Because the happiness that comes from God, it actually blesses everybody. Happiness is not about your emotion. It's about the state of the world. It's about blessedness. It's about goodness. God, make me an instrument of your goodness. Make me an instrument of your love, of your power, of your healing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give God the glory. God, I want to be happy. God, we want to be blessed. God, crowned us where we can experience the way that leads to life. Lord, make us like the tree. Even if we have to be the only smiling source of happiness in some of the places we're in. Somebody say, how are you in this place where hell is breaking out? And you can be such a source of goodness and blessedness and happiness. Oh, don't take credit for it, but say there's something on the inside of me that's working its way to the outside. In my family, in my home, on my job, in my relationships. God, help happiness and blessedness and goodness to manifest itself. It don't mean that life's going to be perfect. It don't mean that everything's going to go the way you dreamt. But it does mean that there is a happy place. Ooh, that God can carve out for us, within us, around us, and even beyond us. And it is that place through the power of God's spirit that has been made available to us all. So God, in the name of Jesus today, we want to be happy, but we don't want a happiness that only benefits a small number of folk. We want the happiness, God, that blesses the world. We want happiness, Lord God, to be within our grasp. We want happiness to be within our reach, oh God. We want it to be palpable. We want it to be concrete. I pray, God, that you will let happiness and joy and peace and righteousness be indicative of your people today. Blessed and happy are they who meditate on your ways day and night. God, help us to be happy. Help the source of our happiness to be found in you and the practices that you've so given us. And when those times, Lord God, where we find ourselves overwhelmed with the ways of trial and struggle, the vicissitudes, the, the pains, the heartaches, the moments and seasons of doubt, God, I pray that even in those moments, God, whatever that happy song is, whatever that happy word is, that happy practice is, help us to find joy in the midst of our pains. Help us to work for happiness in the world. 
even in the midst of the struggle, may we see glimpses of blessedness all around us. And the highest expression of happy life in you, God, is found in salvation. Save us, O oh God. Save us from that which plagues us, the sin which easily besets us. Save us, O oh God, so we may be your people and the sheep of your pasture. And we'll say thank you, Lord. We'll say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, let the people of the way say I want to be happy. Come on, I want to be happy. I want to be happy. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.